Hey guys, let's take a look at graphs quickly today. And just reading graphs is what we're doing. So a couple of components of a graph include the title, which tells you what the graph's all about, labels, which they will label the bottom and the side, and we'll look at a couple of those in a second, and a scale. In other words, when you're, when you're doing temperatures, let's say, uh, I don't know, in the North Pole or something, you don't need a scale that goes from zero degrees to 200 degrees, you know, because it's never going to get that hot. So you could go to something like, I don't know, what is the North Pole, like minus 50 degrees or something out there, up to, let's say, let's say it's December or whatever, till, till 30 degrees. You only need the scale to where it's going to reasonably, so the figures are going to reasonably appear. So a lot of times you will limit a graph by the scale. So we'll see a couple of those in a second. Okay, well, let's look at the first type of graph as a bar graph. So there's a bar graph of, they have a title there, new car sales, all right? So we know what we're looking at, right? Okay, the number of cars is the label here, and the month is down here. So you're looking at this and you go, okay, I see how many they sold in this and that. And you go, wait, how many is it? Oh, they just sold one car? What, one, th one, two, three cars? What, the whole month, how do you, oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, the scale is zero to, oh, so each one of these I'm going from, I got zero here and then there and 100 and then something there and then 200, wait a minute, each one of these is 50. So each one of these lines represent 50 cars sold. So you can look at this and go, okay, I can tell how many cars were sold here. In January, there were 50 cars sold, right? In February, there were let's see, 150 cars. In March, right at 100. April was a good month, let's see. 350 cars, so that's great. And then May, look here, back down to 100. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's the bar graph. All right, the second type of graph is a broken line graph. And actually, this is exactly the same as the one we just did. It just looks a little different. What they've done is they've started with, uh, they, they don't have a, you know bars, they just have d points that are connected and they kind of let you kind of see, you've seen things like this. Like, hey, look, sales are going up. Oh, it went down that much, you know, so, so you can tell. Same exact thing, same scale, same label. You just put dots here and connect them and uh, you can get some kind of uh, information and kind of a trends and things like that. Okay, so we have bar graph, broken line graph, and the third type of graph is a photograph. And then, ugh. Man, that's a weird picture. Don't look at that. Forget all that. Okay. Well, let's read this thing. Based on the following graph, how many more cars were sold in April than were sold in January? Okay, so how many more were sold in April than in January? We need to be able to read the graph. First off, to know what's April. This is, of course. How many were sold in April? 350, it looks like. So how many were sold in January? Just 50. So 350 minus 50 is 300, our answer for this one. How many more cars were sold in April, okay? Now let's get another graph. The daily high temperatures during the week were Monday 86, Tuesday 80, Wednesday 75, 82, 88, 74, Sunday, and so on. Make a bar graph and a broken line graph for this, okay? So here's what you would do. Mine's gonna be tremendously ugly, okay? So I'd go like this, you know, let's say temps, I'd put temperatures, whatever, and then I go, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. Okay, something like this. So Monday, let's say it's 86, and what I would probably do is something like maybe, you know, I'd maybe start at 70, because the, the bottom one is 70 degrees, right? So you don't have to start at zero and count off 86 times or whatever. I would maybe just start at 70 right here or something like that. And then go, you know, I don't know, let's say 75. Uh, and then let's say like 80. And then like, let's say 85 or something like that. Okay, then maybe 90, something to that effect. You see what I'm saying? Don't, don't make it as harder than you have to. Make it really easy for yourself. Just go from the top and the, and, the, and the bottom. So Monday's 86, Tuesday was 80. I'd just go, you know, up to there. Wednesday, 75, just, you know, right to there. Thursday, 82, I'd go, you know, up there somewhere. Uh, Saturday, no, excuse me, Friday's 88, so that's going to be up here. Saturday, 74, maybe like right there. And then Sunday, 84, so I'm making about there. Okay. A broken line graph would look exactly the same except for you would do, instead of having um, 
you know, these bars, you would just do the points. Oops, let me get to that. Oop, there we go. So what was that? 86. Tuesday is 80. Saturday. Whoa, <laughs> I think I did all these wrong. Okay, well, well that's right. I guess Wednesday 75. Thursday 82, so it's up here. Saturday, no, Friday, I keep skipping Friday. Friday is up there. Saturday is 74, and Sunday is 84. So you would just do something like this. Just connect the dots, and then, oh, for goodness sakes, that's the worst dot connecting in the history of humanity. Okay. Anyway, there's your bar graphs and your uh, broken line graph for that. Okay. All right, let's read this one. Based on the following pie graph, how much more money did Juan spend on meats, fruits, vegetables, breads, and dairy than on entertainment and junk foods? So we're going to have to make a calculation based on how he spent on all those things. How much more did he spend on that than entertainment and junk food? So let's figure out entertainment and junk food first. Entertainment's $5. Junk food is $3. So that's $8 total. So let's keep that over here. All right, so meats, fruits, veggies, breads, and dairy. So meats, 10, so we got 10. Fruits, five. Uh, vegetable, vegetables is 17. Bread is two. And dairy products, eight. Okay, must not be a homeschooler. All this uh, dairy stuff, you know. Where's gluten in here? This raw gluten, nice tasty spoonfuls of that. Okay, so 15, 17, 32, that's going to be 42 total. So he spent 42 there, and he spent $34. There you go, right there. Okay, that's how you figure it out. All right, let's take a look at uh, page 99. And, uh, oh, wait, I gave away my tomorrow's thing, so let's take a look. Okay, pause it, do 99. Okay, well, only uh, one problem here. In this graph, what was the average number of type B, uh, type B cars sold in the three years shown? Well, let's look at type B. In 1960, they sold 40, not just 40, 40,000, right? Okay, in 1970, they sold 20,000. And in 1980, they sold, it looks like, right between there, 30,000. So they're asking for the average number of type B cars. We're gonna add 40,000 plus 20,000, plus 30,000, that's gonna give us 90,000. 90,000 divided by three is 30,000. So that's the average number of cars sold. Okay, all right, have fun with your problem set today. Go for at least 25 right, at least 25 right today. Check your answers, do a good job, and see you next time.